dedicated to the strength of the nation. Proudly, we hail. Yes, proudly we hail, starring Audrey Totter in the Templeton Castle, a United States Army and United States Air Force presentation. And now here is our producer, the well-known Hollywood showman, C.P. McGregor. Thank you, thank you, and greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to your theater of stars, where your favorite names from motion pictures join us for your entertainment. Our star is the versatile actress Audrey Totter, who provides a dramatic portrayal in the Templeton Castle. Act one in just a moment. Here now is Wendell Niles with an important message. The young man in the uniform of the United States Army or the United States Air Force has an aim in life and is demonstrating his desire to make the most of his opportunities. The soldier or airman wearing that uniform has chosen his career after careful consideration. He knows that the opportunities are there and that their full realization depends only on his own determination. His future is bright, and he has the satisfying knowledge that above everything else, he is serving his country. Now, once again, our producer. The curtain rises on Act One of The Templeton Castle, starring Audrey Totter as Anne Templeton. You've seen towns like Gainesville in the movies, read about them in books. Perhaps you live in a little community which resembles Gainesville. Good and bad people, right and wrong side of the railroad tracks, and of course, there's always a little gossip about everyone. But in this town, most of it concerns Ann Templeton. Ann, I don't know why you put up with it. If I were you, I'd... But you aren't me, Millie, which I'm sure works out to our mutual advantage. Well, doesn't it bother you at all to have people say such things? Why should it? He used to talk about father the same way. Not the same things, of course, but for the same reason. They're jealous, Millie. Well, if your father were alive, I'll wager he'd fight Ignore back. Ignore and... them, just as I intend to do. Oh, Anne, it isn't true. Might be. Jeff's a nice boy. Well, I know, but... I'm sure he'd make a wonderful husband. Oh, a very expensive husband. All right. I can afford him. Oh, then everything they've been saying is the truth. You'd actually be willing to buy your marriage, wouldn't you? What good is money if you don't spend it? Especially for something you want. Some women like jewelry and furs. I happen to like Jeff. Is there any crime in that? Does he love you, Anne? I think so. If not now, he will eventually. I can do things for him. I can help him. Perhaps Jeff's a little wild now, but he'll settle down. I'll see to it. I'll make him president but... of the factory, chairman of the board. He'll be the biggest man in Gainesville. And the gossip will stop. They'll be too frightened to talk then. <laughs> oh, the Templeton millions. What wonders they do rot. Aren't you being a bit facetious, darling? Mm, sorry, dear. What about Frank? What about him? Well, I thought there was mm, something between you two. At least he seems to think so. Frank Houston is a likable but very dull young man who undoubtedly marry a likable but very dull young lady, whereupon they will settle down and raise scores of likable but very dull little children. Excuse me. Yeah. Hello. Oh, hello, Frank. Speak of the devil. I'm just fine. What? The country club dance? Tonight. Oh, why, yes, it sounds like it might be fun. Eight o'clock. Oh, no, it's not too early. I'll be ready. Bye. They wrote a book about you once. A long book. Gone with the wind. <laughs> I'll be running along now, Scarlet. I'll see you to the door. Oh, no, no, I can find my way out. Well, thanks for stopping by, Millie. I enjoyed the talk. Mm, so did I. It was very educational. Bye. Bye. No. Yes? Oh, Jeff. Well, I thought you might have died or something. I haven't heard from you since Sunday. Tonight? Well, I did have sort of a... The country club dance. <laughs> yes, I know. Well, I'd like to see you, too. 
Well, all right. Pick me up at 8. Bye. Hello? Hello, is that you, Frank? Well, this is Anne. Frank, about tonight, I, I am terribly sorry, but I'm afraid I can't go. <laughs> well, I'm not feeling very well. No, nothing serious, just a little cold coming, hon. No, I'll just go to bed. It'll probably clear up by morning. Oh, very well, I'm sorry, too. Thanks for inviting me, though. Bye. <laughs> Yes. Jeff, you said on the phone you had something important to tell me. Oh, yeah, so I did. Well, I guess now's as good a time as any. Let's go out on the terrace. All right. Oh, say, we haven't sampled a punch. Like some? Mm-hmm, yes. You go ahead. I'll be right with you. All right. Hello, Ann. Frank. Looks like you got over your cold. Well, Frank, I, um... I know. Saw you and Jeff come in. Having a good time? Frank, if you're trying to be... I'm not. Just making conversation. Well, I can explain. Don't. I brought Millie. She's putting on a new face or something. Millie's a good dancer. Too bad she got stuck with me. You're trying to embarrass me, aren't you? Well, I'll save you the trouble. I came with Jeff because I preferred to. I'm very fond of him. It seems that everyone in town is aware of that fact except you. How about Jeff? Is he aware? Oh, rarely, Frank. Sorry. Well, you needn't be. And I'll tell you something further. I believe that Jeff is going to ask me to marry him tonight. What do you think of that? I hadn't. Oh, here he comes. Hello, Jeff. Hi, Frank. Good, thanks. I better be getting back. See you later. Sure thing. Punch is guaranteed. I try to cut. Here. Thank you. Ah, quite a night. Beautiful. Anne? Yes? You know that trip I made to New York last month about a connection with the brokerage office? Yes. Well, I got an answer today. They're going to give me a trial. Oh, that's wonderful, Jeff. Yeah, but that isn't all. You see, well, I figured now that I have a job, something I can depend on, why... Anne, I want to get married. Jeff. You think it's the right thing? Oh, I'm sure of it. I hope you can feel that way. I think I'm very much in love. Are you, Jeff? Of course, we've only seen each other a few times. Your father's a member of the stock exchange. They have a country home in Darien. Beautiful place. Ever been to Connecticut, Anne? Connecticut? Yes, well, I met her on my first trip east. Her name's Barbara. She's about your size. Auburn hair. She even looks a little like you. Jeff, will you, uh, will you get me another cup of punch? Sure. What's the matter, Anne? I am just thirsty. Please, Jeff. All right. Well, don't go away now. I got a lot of things to tell you. Oh, excuse me. Uh, my fault, Frank. Can't look where I'm going. Say, hey, Anne, I think I left my cigarette case out here. Oh, here it is. I... Anne. Yes? What's wrong? Nothing. Don't talk to me, Frank, please. You're crying. I said you'd leave me alone. Can't you understand? Ann, wait. Ann, don't cross the driveway. Look out for the car. Ann! Ann? Dr. Johnson? Now, how are you feeling? Not too bad, thank you. I've looked at the x-rays. And? But I've been a doctor here in the same town for 19 years, Anne. I always tell my patients the truth. I'm going to have to tell you the truth. It's bad? Very bad. I doubt if you'll ever walk again, Anne. <gasps> now, there is a chance, of course. There's always a chance. Specialists, series of complex operations. Perhaps they'll help, but the odds are against it. You might as well know now, Anne. A cripple. I'm to be a hopeless cripple. Oh, now, get that word hopeless out of your mind. You'll be handicapped, yes, but that isn't the end of the world. I'm not a psychologist, Anne, only a country doctor. Let me tell you, though, every obstacle can be conquered. And I know you will conquer this. You sound like the doctor in a popular novel. I'm sorry. You're sorry. I can't walk, but you're sorry. Oh, now, Anne. I want to see someone. I want to see Millie. Find Millie for me. She's outside. I'll, I'll send her in. Miss Drake? Yes? Come in, please. Not too long. Oh, thank you, Doctor. 
Hello, Millie. Anne. Sit down, Millie. I want to talk to you. I'm going to tell you something, and I don't want you to ever repeat it. Understand? Of course, dear. Millie, I'm crippled. Now, don't you feel sorry for me, because I don't feel sorry for myself. What is it the doctor said? I'm going to have to learn to conquer this. Well, that's what I intend to do. But I won't be alone. I don't think I could stand it alone. Well, Jeff's outside. He's terribly worried about you, Anne. Shall I... No. Jeff's the cause of this. One day it'll come back to him, and I pray it does. But that's over now. I want you to call Frank. Frank? Yes, Frank. He's been waiting, too, but... Good. Tell him I'd like to see him. Anne, what are you going to do? Never mind. Just remember what I said. Don't you ever tell anyone I'm permanently crippled. Do you promise? Well, yes, but... Call Frank. Anne... Call him, Millie. Frank. Yes? Come in. Anne. Anne, how are you? As well as could be expected, I suppose. Thanks for stopping by, Millie. You've been a great comfort to me. I'll call you tomorrow. Yes, please do. Goodbye. Bye. Frank, you look worried. I am. About me. Of course. And are you... Oh, I'm fine, Frank. Just fine. You know, I'm sorry about what I said. What? About my going to the dance with Jeff because I preferred him to you. And you, you don't have to talk about but it. But I do want to talk about it. I want to talk about it because, well, it wasn't the truth. What are you trying to say? It's you I'm fond of, Frank. It always has been. I said those things to you at the club only to make you jealous. You do forgive me, don't you? Wait. You never have to apologize to me, Anna. I love you. And I love you, Frank. I love you enough to marry you. Anne. You want to marry me, don't you? Why, it's all I ever thought of. <laughs> I sound almost brazen, don't I, as though I were making the proposal. Oh, not a bit. I, I've been proposing to you, Anne, since the day I met you. I never said the words aloud, never got up the courage, but they were there. They've always been there. Will you marry me, Anne? I'll be in a wheelchair for the ceremony, Frank. You understand that. You'll be beautiful. Of course, it'll only be just for a few weeks. Just temporary. I love you. Thank you, Frank. We pause briefly from our story, The Templeton Castle, starring Audrey Totter, to bring you a brief message from our government. Looking for something new, different, and exciting in the way of a job? Want to combine education and travel with good pay every month of the year? Then here's an offer that will interest you, and any young man with a wish for adventure in his blood. You can combine all those items with service to your country. The job is waiting for you in the Occupation Army in the European Command. Any qualified young man may volunteer with the assurance that he will see Europe. All the places you've only read about or seen in the movies. Enlist in the peacetime United States Army now for three years, and you may choose duty in Europe. And more, with the travel and adventure this job places at your feet, there's that good Army pay plus 20% for overseas service. There are your food, clothing, quarters, and medical care at no cost to you. And there are many opportunities for education in the Army schools for a fine career for yourself while you're serving your country. Visit your nearest United States Army recruiting station and learn the details today. Curtain rises on Act Two of The Templeton Castle, starring Audrey Totter as Anne Templeton. The marriage of Anne to Frank Houston was one of Gainesville's most important social events. And for weeks after the ceremony, the townspeople continue to talk about little else. Speculation, gossip, small talk, all centered around those people in the house on the hill, the two who lived in the Templeton Castle. Hello, darling. Good evening, dear. You're late, aren't you? Yes, I stopped by Judge Williams' office. He's putting in a good word for me at the Fraser Law Firm. How nice. Uh, I'd like to get started with them. Best attorneys in town. I called your office at five. They said you'd left. 
Sure, you haven't been talking with a judge all this time. No, no. As a matter of fact, I ran into Millie downtown, drove her home. You seem to be running into Millie quite regularly of late. Well, she works right across the street from me. Which obviously makes it very convenient. Very convenient for what? For you to drive her home. Tell me, how did the day go? <laughs> Nothing spectacular. Just study and more study. If reading law books makes you a good lawyer, that'll be another Clarence Darrell. Frank, I'd like you at the factory. I'd like you there to oversee my interests. Our interests. And you know the factory runs itself. I want to be an attorney. I want to be a good attorney. Not only that, I always would like to feel as though I'd made my own way. I'm offering you something the average person would have to work a lifetime for. Why not be practical, Frank? Listen, Anne, I've gone along with you on quite a few things in the short time we've been married. I didn't want to live in this house. Your house. I don't like driving a car that doesn't belong to me. And the money... You're even paying my office rent. All of this, it's contrary to what I believe. What are you trying to do, Anne? Buy me? Frank. Oh, I'm sorry, Anne. I didn't mean it. Guess I'm just tired. Let's forget it. Frank. Yes, dear? I've been meaning to say something to you about my getting better. I, um... That is, the doctor told me some rather bad news last week. Frank, I'll be in this wheelchair for some time. Very likely for the rest of my life. Darling, I'm sorry. You're not angry? Angry? Yes. Of course, I didn't know this at the time, but you don't feel as though I tricked you into marriage. I told you I loved you, Anne. I wanted to marry you. This doesn't make any difference. How could it? I thank you for that, darling. Now, I suppose you'd better run along and change for dinner. Yes, dear. Hello. Hello. I'd like to speak to Judge Williams, please. Uh, this is Ann Templeton. Yes. Hello. Hello, Judge Williams. I understand that you intend to help Frank establish himself at the Fraser Law Firm. <laughs> yes, it's very kind of you. However, I should prefer that you let the matter drop. I'd rather you didn't assist him in any way. I'm sorry I'm unable to explain it this time. I realize that, Judge. Judge Williams, you've been handling the Templeton legal affairs for some 25 years, I believe. Perhaps I should locate another attorney. I thought you'd see it my way. Thank you, Judge. Goodbye. Another sandwich, Millie? No, thank you. I'm glad you could come this afternoon. So am I. We haven't had a talk for months. It gets rather lonesome here in this big house, especially when you're, well, incapacitated. I think you've taken things wonderfully well, Anne. Hasn't been easy, has it? Oh, you learn tolerance, Millie. You learn to accept that which cannot be changed. However, there are some things that can be changed, and will be. Things that have happened behind my back. Oh, is there something wrong, Anne? I believe you're best qualified to answer that. I? How long have you been in love with my husband? Oh, Anne, are you crazy? Why, Frank and I... Lunch together every afternoon, and he drives you home every evening. Well, yes, but... It seems that you're constantly together, and I want it to stop. Oh, Anne, if this weren't so preposterous, I'd... You'd become angry at being found out. But you don't dare because you pity me. Well, I don't need your pity. What I want is your word that you won't see Frank again. Break off this affair, Millie. Oh, there's no affair. There isn't, never has been. How can I make you believe that? Don't try. Just stop seeing Frank. Why should she stop seeing him? Frank. I heard from the hallway. What's this all about? You heard home early. Answer my question, Anne. All right, Millie, you tell me. Oh, it's not important, Frank. You... Never mind, Millie. Actually, Frank, we've had a bit of unpleasantness. You see, I found out about you and Millie. Found out? You found out what? I can appreciate your feeling tied down, Frank. And really, I don't blame you too much. You're bound to feel attracted to other women from time to time, as long as I remain an invalid. But we live in a small town. Word gets around. Everyone knows that Millie and I are friends. That's enough of that, Anne. Millie, I'm sorry, would you? Oh, of course, Frank. I was just leaving. Don't bother to see me to the door. Goodbye. 
All right, Ann. Let's hear it. Let's hear the whole thing start to finish. I believe everything has been said. I'm willing to let the matter drop. Well, I'm not. Get this straight, Ann. I don't like unfounded accusations, particularly this sort. You're going to apologize to Millie. Further, you're going to explain something to me. Explain? Why didn't you tell me you'd spoken to Judge Williams about my Fraser appointment? Well, I... Uh... You asked him not to recommend me. Oh, Frank, I only did what I thought was best for you. What you thought? I worked eight years for a diploma, two more to pass my bar exams. And then with just one telephone call, you managed to destroy ten years of my life. You're being very dramatic, Frank. I'm sorry the judge told you. I asked him not to. Oh, he wouldn't have. Except that he plans to retire next month. You see, he has no reason to fear you or your money any longer. Oh, Frank, please, let's stop this. Supper's almost ready. You'd better eat alone, Ann. You'd better get in the habit of eating alone. Frank, where are you going, Frank? Frank, is that you? I've written a letter. Inasmuch as you're my employer, I believe you're entitled to a letter of resignation. You're leaving the factory. I'm leaving Gainesville. But, oh, I know what it is. I should have known a long time ago. You're sick of me. I've become a burden to you. You never would have married me if you'd known I was to be an invalid for the rest of my life. Anne... That night, I was waiting in the hospital corridor just before you called me in. I spoke to the doctor. He told me there was very little hope. Then you knew. All the time, you knew. Yes, I knew. I knew a lot of things. Why you wanted me at the factory. Being a small-town lawyer wouldn't have been good enough for the husband of Ann Templeton. I wouldn't be obligated to you. I wouldn't owe my very existence to you. Oh, you're talking nonsense. The strange part is I, I can't condemn you. I was the one at fault. I accepted these things, compromised. But marriage isn't a compromise. It's a bargain, 50-50. I had to learn that. Frank, I don't want you to go. You can't leave me here in this wheelchair. Why not, Anne? I think you enjoy your wheelchair. Enjoy? Yes, it gives you an advantage. People mustn't hurt you. People must consider your feelings above all else because you're crippled. They mustn't say what they mean or do what they think right so long as you disagree. That would be cruel, inconsiderate. I've never asked for pity. You haven't required it because it's all self-pity. The doctor said there was a chance that one day you might be able to walk. A slim chance, but still a chance. Have you ever done anything about it? Have you ever seen the doctor again? You don't want to walk in. You don't want to even try. Frank. Goodbye, Ann. Frank. Frank, don't go. I need you, Frank. Please. Uh, Frank, I'm sorry. Listen to me. I'm sorry. <laughs> Ann. Ann. You shouldn't have gotten out of the chair. Are you hurt? I walked. I just walked. Yes, yes, darling. I walked because I wanted to. <laughs> Don't you believe me? I believe you. Frank, I've never begged. I've always been proud and resentful. There's hate in this house and in me. Oh, Frank, I want to change. And people change. It wouldn't be much of a world if they couldn't. Help me to change, Frank. I need your help. Why didn't you say it long ago? And you'll walk, I'm sure of it. Not tomorrow or maybe not a year from tomorrow. But one day you will walk. If I do, it will be because of you. Thank you, Frank. Thank you for... For what, Ann? For courage, understanding, for just being you, my husband. The curtain falls on the final act of the Templeton Castle. Our star, Audrey Totter, will return for a curtain call after this timely message from Wendell Niles. Want a future unlimited? Want to fly with the best? Then find out if you can qualify for the United States Air Force Aviation Cadet Training Program. Find out if you can be one of the best, an aviation cadet. Basic qualifications are these. You must be between 20 and 26 and one half years of age, 
unmarried, with two years of college, or the ability to pass an equivalent examination and physically fit. If you fulfill those conditions, you may become an aviation cadet. Then after a full year's training, you'll receive your pilot's wings and a commission as second lieutenant in the Air Force Reserve and orders to active duty with beginning pay up to $336 per month. Outstanding graduates receive regular commissions in the Air Force. So act now. Visit your nearest United States Air Force base or recruiting station at once. Find out if you can become one of the best, an aviation cadet. Now once again, our star, Audrey Totter, and our producer. I know that you, ladies and gentlemen, join me in a cordial welcome for our star, Audrey Totter. Audrey, it is good to have you back with us again. Well, C.P., after confusing our interview with the three Roberts, Taylor, Montgomery, and Walkers I did last time, I was afraid I might not get a curtain call again. Oh, I haven't forgotten that. You gave me a pretty bad time, but you won't do that again, will you? <laughs> of course not. All right. I guess it's safe to talk to you about your latest pictures, then. Let's see. You are under contract to MGM. That's right. And you made Saxon Charm. Yes, but at Universal. I just finished Strange Temptation, though. For Metro? No, Paramount. <laughs> <laughs> now, wait a minute. You're not going to start that routine again. Besides, I want to talk to you uh, seriously for a moment about the Veterans Hospital Tours. Well, that's a grand thing, C.P. Yes, I know. I was just talking to Irving Landy at the Hollywood Coordinating Committee, and he tells me that you're among the 25 stars who volunteered to devote two weeks to the tour. Tell us about it. Well, the motion picture industry and the artists agree to the tour and will entertain in veteran hospitals over the nation. Irving mentioned 107 hospitals, which means the group of stars cover every one of them. Yes, we all cover a different route. The tours are set up by the veterans' hospital camp shows in cooperation with the coordinating committee. Well, all I can say, Audrey, this is a wonderful gesture. Yeah, I guess all of us who can get away from commitments have volunteered. You may be interested in knowing that this program, besides being broadcast nationally, goes into all the veterans' hospitals throughout the nation as well. Oh, that's fine. I'm doubly glad, then, I had this opportunity to talk about the tour, C.P. And now, before I leave, won't you tell me what you are doing here next week? Next week, Audrey, and ladies and gentlemen, Dane Clark comes to our theater of stars in a special Christmas story, The Stranger. It is a vivid and dramatic portrayal of a returning soldier who finds a new life for himself at a Christmas dinner. Oh, that sounds wonderful. I'll try to get near a radio at curtain time. Goodbye, C.P. Goodbye, Audrey Potter. And good luck on your tour. Be sure to join us next week, ladies and gentlemen, when we bring you Dane Clark in The Stranger. Until then, this is C.P. McGregor saying thanks for listening and cheerio from Hollywood. <laughs> Counter appears with the courtesy of the Hollywood Coordinating Committee, which arranges for the appearance of all stars in this program. Script was by Lou Reed, with music under the direction of Eddie Scrivanich. This program is transcribed in Hollywood for release at this time. Wendell Niles speaking. <laughs>